Uh, we'll just put it there for our kind of pulsing rhythm, the techno rhythm, uh, or just a kick house dance. And we'll start adding more of the dub techno specific styles. And then later on, we'll add more uh, percussion and hats and stuff like that. Okay. Please let me know if there's any questions at any point. Uh, let's start first of all with one of the most characteristic elements of this style, which essentially once we make this, it's already going to sound like dub techno which is those uh, techno chord stab. It's a techno chord stab, okay? So let's say I, I would, I did share with you some presets for delay, for chords, for stuff like that, I'll show you, but let's make it our own from scratch because I don't think it's such a complex sound, but there's so much to learn from this simplicity, but adding all these effects and using them, I think it's a, we should look at, see it from the beginning. So I'm going to add wavetable. You can use any synth to this empty MIDI track. Okay. Uh, now, first of all, we should probably be in a minor key. So we can go any minor key, uh, D minor. Okay. Let's say D minor. Um, sweet. So, you know what? Let's do A minor just to keep it simple, just the white keys. We'll do A minor. Now, to, in order for me to get the sound that I want quicker, I do already want to play a chord. A minor chord is enough. Okay, let me just change it here. Uh, today I'm going to also be working with my push right here. Where is it? Can I open it? Why it won't open? Great, now it doesn't want to open. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to play the notes here. Uh, I had a camera. Maybe it's because my Zoom camera is on. I can try it in a second. Uh, you can play a MIDI chord on your keyboard if you want, or already program a few MIDI chords. But I did create, just to make our life easier, I made a techno um, dub chord, uh, techno chord generator. It should be called techno dub. I'll rename it. But techno chord generator essentially is just a MIDI effect track that have a bunch of chord effects inside of it. And once you load it, you just uh, hold one note. And it gives you a whole chord, and you can turn off a, a bunch of things here if you want less uh, notes. Okay, so it will make sense once we start making the sound, but uh, at least we already have a very easy chord to trigger with one note. So then later, our clips, or we can do it now, will be something like this. Right, we'll just... Let's turn down a bit. I don't need to draw all the chords, I just have that. That's similar to what they used to do back in the day, where they used to sample a chord and then do that. We just do it with a synth because we have uh, the modern power of uh, digital synthesizers. Okay, um, sweet. So let's make a very simple sound here. Essentially, we just need probably like a saw wave, something like this. Okay, we're going to filter it. And we're going to use the amp envelope to shape both the volume and the filter. So I want it to be very plucky, so I'm going to do this type of shape. Okay, let's open the filter so we can hear it, but we're kind of plucky. Okay, something like that. And we're going to go to the matrix here so we can map our filter frequency to be modulated by this shape as well. So I want it to open close very quickly, like this, open close. So let's go to the matrix. Here we have the amp envelope, that's what we were using. And to the filter one frequency. If you don't see the filter frequency, just click on the control that you want to modulate and it will appear as the last row in the matrix. So let's click here and let's bring this up. That's the amount of modulation, how, how much it's gonna open up the filter. Nice. Uh, we can change the filter slope here. It's going to just going to be a steeper slope, so it's more filtered in the cutoff point. Okay. Let me mute the kick for right now, so we can focus on the sound. We can. That's basically enough for right now. And you'll see how we, once we add the effects, we're starting to get to that sound. But there's a lot of things we can change here. We might do it in the future just to get a variation. Maybe get a few different type of dub chords. Uh, dub techno chords that we can use. Uh, we can also add some unison here, and this will uh, uh, duplicate each note 
by this amount, so three times, every note would be times three, and each note is going to be randomized in pitch position and also in the wavetable position, okay? So it just makes a much wider sound. Kind of like almost a chorus effect, but uh, it just creates variation between each voice. Okay, uh, sweet. So that's enough for now. Let's now continue to probably the most important aspect of this style, which is um, the delay. So under audio effects, delay and loop, we, yes, there's other delays that are amazing. We're going to use the most powerful delay, which is echo. Okay. Uh, any questions so far on just the setting up of the core sound of this kind of plucky sound? Okay, sweet. Let me know if uh, any questions. Um, nice. So I'm going to take the echo. We're going to do an overview of what's going on here. We're going to go over everything because it just, uh, I think it's essential if you want to make this type of styles and any style that use delay to really know how to use uh, your delay plugin. In our case, it's echo because then you can use any delay once you understand all the controls that the delay might have. Uh, and this is a very elaborate type of delay uh, effect called echo. Okay. Most important thing for us is the dry-wet, that's the mix between the dry and the wet signal. Later, we might use some return tracks, uh, which will always be 100% wet in most cases, because uh, we have the dry as the original track. Right now, we put in it as an insert effect, which means it's right on the track itself. So the dry-wet will be the mix between the delay and the uh, dry signal and just no effect. Okay, nice. Uh, the time of the delay, by default, you should know that this is on dotted notes, so it's syncopated. So we can change it to notes. It will change on both sides because right now they're linked. Okay, we can unlink them if you want different times for the left and right. And let's switch also the right side to uh, just notes. So quarter notes instead of dotted quarter notes. Okay, let's bring it back here. Uh, can you guys confirm that you hear it from left to right? I can't yeah, see. I do. Okay, perfect. What's up, Ray? Um, sweet. So now we also can do some more kind of widening effects, and this is great to know for anything. Right here, we can offset each side, each delay, the delay left and right. So that means that they're slightly going to be different in timing, which is going to create this kind of widening effect. Okay. And usually, if you want to be kind of gentle with it, just do something like this. Okay, so now the delay sounds very wide. And this works slightly differently than later we'll see here. I don't love this stereo expansion. But you can offset. Let's do it kind of more extreme. Okay, and you can create all sorts of rhythms with that. Sweet, so that's the timing section. Now, right here, the feedback, and those will probably be the most important controls for any delay that you use, whether it's the Ableton delays or plugins, those will be dry wet, the time, and the feedback. Feedback is how many repetitions we're going to have or how much, how uh, many times it's going to feed back to itself, which is important to understand. We'll see why, because that the, is the dub delay. But that's a pretty high feedback. Okay, no feedback, it's just going to repeat once. Okay, in this specific delay, we can go above 100, which will uh, essentially always kind of feed back to itself and will forever boost the volume. Okay, we can take it down to 100. Um, you can even use it as kind of like a loop machine, which is super cool. Like I can go, uh, just as an example, put the dry wet on 100. I'm going to turn this off right now. We'll talk about this. Let's put the time on one bar. Let's link it. One bar and feedback on 100. <clears throat> so now it's kind of like a tape loop machine. It became a tape loop machine. I'm going to turn off the chord MIDI effect so I can play individual notes. But now when I play, let me play, oops, sorry. Let me play one note. Okay, actually I'm gonna put it on 50% so we can hear the dry. Let me turn this down. 
Um, so 50%, uh, wait, I'm going to turn on the feedback. Okay. 50% dry wet, 100% feedback, and one bar. So now I'm going to play something. And it's going to repeat forever. Okay, what's nice about this, and of course, if you combine it, let's put some reverb. So I'm not playing it anymore. I just played something on my keyboard. It's just looping forever. Now I can change the time. And because this is kind of like a, a tape uh, echo, kind of like a hardware delay modulation, uh, emulation, I can change the time. Okay, and it will also change the pitch uh, because of that. So let's go, let's turn down the feedback. And I'll turn on the techno code. Um, and this is just scratching the surface of this echo. You can do so much with it. It's insane. For us, we'll just uh, mostly do the dub delays, maybe some other stuff. Okay, so that's uh, the feedback section. Well, let's turn it up because we want kind of a... Um, okay, I'm going to just delete this, load a new one so we can start fresh again. And I'm just going to adjust the dry wet here. Okay, it sound like this. Change the timing from eighth note dotted from syncopated. Let's listen to it with the kick. Okay, it can be cool, but less dubby. Let's do eighth note. And maybe a higher feedback. Okay, nice. Now, uh, another thing that I guess I'll come back to this because this is more kind of like unique and special uh, that we see in delays is the filter. And the filter is essential because this is in the feedback system. That means that we have a delay and then it's going to the filter and feed it back and going to the filter every time again and again. So if I have something like this with a high feedback, what we'll hear is, is the delays getting more and more filtered and it's that's very dub type of sound. Okay, we can of course play with that. Uh, so filtering, very important, okay? Nice, now you do have a built-in reverb here, which is absolutely amazing. So you can use that, although I do wanna show you some stuff in the hybrid reverb, but uh, yeah, this reverb is great. Here's the length of it. Let's just turn it up. Okay, already. Um, built in. You can even kind of put the reverb in the feedback system, so it's also going through the reverb, but it can sound a bit metallic. That's kind of cool. We can hear the, the reverb. Um, super awesome, just this kind of combining the filter, high feedback and reverb, you can already get uh, closer to that sound, okay? Uh, we do have some uh, built-in stereo effect. If you turn it down all the way, it will become mono, so it can sound more old school. Okay, kind of in the center. Um, and we do also have this input section where you turn on this uh, driving the clip, where uh, the, the, dry, uh, the dry signal, you can drive it. That means that if I turn up the input, it would kind of emulate this old school hardware units where the, the dry signal will also get a bit distorted. Uh, I'm going to turn down, this is what I'm going to do right now is gain staging. That means that when I push the volume here, I don't want it to completely raise the volume of everything. So I'm going to use the output volume to turn it down. Okay, so that's gain staging. Let's turn it down even more and push it so you can hear the... Okay, so now we can really hear the distortion. So really cool stuff to kind of add more of an analog dirt and vibe. Uh, just be aware to turn it down or else it will be very loud. I don't want to right, play that. Um, so let's do just a tiny bit. Sweet. Uh, questions? Okay. Uh, like oh, go ahead. If you were doing that on a on a hardware um, sound card, you would see the clipping on the LED. Is there anything here that's giving you any sense of how far you're pushing it? Mm, very good question. No, there's no kind of drive meter. 
uh, but only how it sounds in this case. Only like if we can start actually hearing it getting distorted, which we are in. It does sound much more dirtier than the no input gain. So the, the, good question. In this case, no, we don't have any meter to indicate how much drive we actually uh, put in the signal. I mean, this is the amount of drive, but how much is it actually distorting? Like the saturator, saturator, we have that. We don't have it here. Um, Sato, we have this meter right here. This threshold is how, when it's going to start uh, using the saturation algorithm. But good question, no. Um, okay, sweet. So just this first page of the e echo can get you so far with so many things, especially in this style, getting that uh, filter, uh, getting that echo. Okay, the dub echo. Now, uh, I do want to also recommend to use reverb, specifically in Ableton, hybrid reverb is a great device to go deep with because it can do so much and it's probably the most powerful reverb Ableton have uh, built in. So just to mention, if we are kind of taking more inspiration from the dub and reggae music, a lot of the reverbs they were using were spring reverbs which are kind of one of the most cheaper versions of reverbs. You can find them a lot in guitar amps built in, and it's an actual spring. So you, if you ever have a guitar amp that have reverb, try to hit the amp and you'll actually hear the spring. If anyone have the Moog Grandmother, it's called. Anyway, it also have a spring. You hit the synth, you hear the spring reverb. So those were very popular uh, back in the day, especially with the, that dub culture. Uh, so you can have right here in the hybrid reverb a whole category just for spring reverbs. Uh, what we want to do is only use, in this case, the convolution side of hybrid reverb because we also have an algorithmic side that we can choose a bunch of different algorithms that are amazing. Uh, but for us, we're only going to use the convolution section, okay, which is this. Uh, so let's just listen to those spring reverb just so you can hear and we'll probably be able to hear the spring as well let me play a chord i turned off the echo we're just listening to the spring reverb now because it's a spring uh, it might have some delay already kind of built in it let's see i'm sure here we go here we can hear it kind of okay super old school also great for uh, some of these are great for this old school R&B Motown vocals, also can work nice. Or Jamaican kind of reggae vocal, lovers rock and stuff like that. You know, the kind of the super uh, love song side of reggae. Spring Reverbs, super awesome. Check them out. I do want to also mention one um, algorithm here. Let's go just algorithm, which is the quartz. This uh, have a de built-in delay in it, or just the diffusion system is very sparse. So it has these cool delays that you can change with the distance. See this cool rhythm, the size. And it's kind of like the feedback section almost. So awesome stuff with the quartz. Uh, just know that it's a cool algorithm and the convolution reverb, and you can also combine them as well. Let's do serial. So this one goes to this one. And with our echo. Let's go to the clip. I'm going to go here right here and duplicate the clip a few times and just delete maybe, maybe I want it every two bars. Now, what I'm doing here can and probably should be automated. So I want to just remind everyone that you can automate with your mouse. We'll do this later when we go to the arrangement view and start uh, a performing kind of our arrangement. Um, sweet. Any questions so far? Okay. Another thing that you can add into this chain is another filter right before the reverb. <coughs> And this filter already ha have a built-in LFO that can wobble the filter up and down. I'm going to put it on, let's try a band pass. 
Okay, this is without. A much fuller sound. This is just going to make it much more atmospheric and maybe underwatery because of the low pass and, and uh, high pass filters that are combined to a band pass. Mm -hmm. 